Okay, let's get in here again. Got another idea. I'm gonna take the end off the pump and check a couple of things in there. Actually, I got an email from a guy who pointed me to that there's a, a little piston that runs in that this hole right here under that plug. There's a piston that runs in there with a spring and maybe that's preventing the proper amount of fuel from getting into the lift pump and on the end of the injection pump here. So I'm gonna take a look at that. And to get the cover off the pump, I'm gonna to have to take these lines back off that I so painstakingly put on just a couple of days ago. But that's, uh, there's, that's the reason that all these bolts come out so easy, because they've been out so often. <laughs> okay, I got number three and number four line off, and I can get at these screws now. So maybe I don't have to take the other two lines off to get the cover out. So let me try that. Get at this other one here too, and even that one down in here I can get at in the back one. See, I can sneak between those two lines. Let's see. Yeah, I'll get that too. Look at that. Okay, I got those bolts loose. And look at that. The cover came right out. All right. Okay, so here's the end cover in a vise. This is that plug right here, and I didn't take that out when I rebuilt the pump because I didn't know what it would do, and I didn't know if there was anything down in there, but apparently that little piston that runs in there uh, either allows or prevents fuel from coming through this bottom port right here. And so what I did a while ago was I put some fluid in here, and it came out the top port, but it didn't come out the bottom port. So that might be the fuel starvation problem that we've been experiencing on that engine. So let's try and get this plug out. I'm going to have to put some heat on it. Let's see if there's anything in there. Oh, there it is. There's a spring and a little piston. Okay, so here's that end cover. Cleaned it up a bit. And, you know, I'm discovering more and more about this tractor as I go. One of the things is that there's no separate plate that sits inlays into this cover here you know, like a lot of them you know there's a little separate inlaid cover and actually back in my video up in here where i rebuilt the pump you know i, I thought that this was just sitting flush but on closer examination there's no inlaid uh, piece in here this is a solid casting for one thing now i just cleaned it up a little bit here today but so this is how this goes together that's the inlet Okay, with your inlet strainer. And then there's a plug at the bottom, like that. Now, down in this side port here, I hadn't taken that apart when I rebuilt the pump. And there's this fellow from Massachusetts who emailed me, a guy named Adam. I want to thank him a lot for, for pointing this out to me. But down in here, and he even uh, forwarded a drawing, a standardine drawing. I'll show you that here in a second. See that where it shows, it shows uh, this is a little plug, goes in there like that. So the, and this is the order of everything in there. There's an O-ring, and then there's a tube, and if you if you just look at it like that, you you'll see it's just it looks like it doesn't come out. But what I did was I wrapped it against the vise, and I got that piece to come out. It's got an O-ring on it, and there's a little piston that runs down inside of it. And then in behind it, there's a spring, okay? 
But you can look at it, it's quite complex. In this tube here, there's a slit on the back. The other side has a port. There's a small hole here, a larger hole there, a larger hole on this end. So it's got, you know, it definitely has something to do uh, with the fuel supply to the engine. And if it's gummed up, it, it may not work. And it, it, I'm thinking it's probably preventing a uh, sufficient amount of fuel from the inlet side to reach the, 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 the veins in the lift pump. So uh, I'm going to clean all this up really well, put it back together, and we're going to put it on the tractor and uh, see if that makes a difference. Because that was something I hadn't even, you know, I, I saw the plug there when I rebuilt the pump and I didn't think it did anything. I thought it might have been just another, you know, a port like this one was. But uh, there you go, all that inside of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sea foam, pour it in a bottle, and I'm going to soak these parts. And then we're going to clean them up and I'm actually going to look in the kit of O-rings that I got for rebuilding the pump and there might be an O-ring, a new one this size that I can put on here and maybe one for here and we'll put that back together and I'll let you know how this works. Hopefully that fixes the fuel starvation problem. Okay. I'll put that housing in there I think. I like to, no, it's not big enough. My bottle's not big enough for the housing. Okay, we'll do that later. Actually, I found a can that everything will be submerged in the fluid. Okay, so I soaked those parts overnight. And look at the color of that sea foam. You know, a grubby that is. And uh, before we take those out of there, I want to show you something else. I went and dug through some a parts bin I have for this tractor and, and what I had done one time was I bought a, a second-hand pump it's not the identical pump but I thought some of the parts might be interchangeable this was for a six cylinder mine's a four and some other things is different but one thing that is very similar is the end cover so that's the same size that's the same size as mine and but there is a difference in this re pressure regulating valve uh, this one, the old one I've got, um, the pressure regulating valve goes in a separate passage on an angle like that. And this one goes in the top, but it's the same function. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm soaking that pressure regulating valve out of this other style uh, in some sea foam. And I'm going to let that soak. I just started doing that. But should this one, you know, for some reason prove not to work uh, the way we need it to work. Uh, we have this as a backup and, and it does the same thing. So uh, I'll just set that aside for now. Okay, so let's take a look at, let's take a look at this stuff that we've been soaking overnight. All right, now there's the body. Now I had, I had wire brushed the body a bit before I put it in there, so it didn't clean it that much, but I wanted to make sure that the holes got cleaned out inside and any junk came out of there so so that's out of there now let's look at that little that cylinder look at that that came out a lot cleaner and then there's the little I had actually taken this out here a minute ago and I, I tried the piston inside of it see that little piston that's supposed to move completely freely in there with no resistance whatsoever they say you should be able to shake it back and forth and have it move and maybe because it's wet it's not going to do that right now but when it's a dry assembly it should be able to shake back and forth so it's sort of doing it but it's not quite free so what i've been doing okay so what i've got here is some this green scrub pad and uh let me see here uh. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put some of that down inside of the bore. Like that twist it in there. Let's see if I can push it down through. Clean out the inside of that bore. I didn't want to, you know, use anything too harsh. You know, and this stuff doesn't, you know, dig too deep or scratch too hard, but it will take off varnish and stuff. So there's the little piston. 
that's out of there and you can see that's all the way through so I'm just twisting it try and clean that up the best we can pull it through from the other side like that There's a little bit of dirt coming out on it. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with that. Let's see what else we have in here. We had the two springs. And they look just the same. But look at, look at how much dirt came out of that housing. So, Okay, so now I'm, I've rinsed this and I'm going through it with some paper towel. All right. Can even see a part number on there. One one five O three. Okay, and that O ring, I don't have a replacement O ring. That's partially why I was digging in this bag of parts I had, because I had that original kit to rebuild the pump. I thought there might be a new O ring in there to fit this, but I don't see one. So this one looks intact for now. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that one. But uh, let's just make sure that piston is going to slide in there easily. So we can use this the same scrub pad to work on the, the surface of this little piston. Try and clean that off as if we can. Okay, so with the housing cleaned out, the first thing that goes in there is this spring. Okay, and it's got that little coil in the center that's facing up. Okay, so that faces out. Okay, that goes down in there. The O-ring's on it. That goes down in there like that. We could knock it down a little bit. I'm going to use a little WD-40 just as a bit of lubricant to get that going. I'm going to drop that piston in there. Okay. And then that little spring goes on top. That's the pressure regulating spring. Okay. And it, and it just drops into the hole and it looks like there's something missing. But what happens in operation is the discharge uh, fuel pressure uh, from the, the lift pump will come on the other side of that and push that up. And that spring will bottom out against this plug and uh, depending on how much pressure is generated by the pump it'll push that uh, plunger uh, far enough to uncover uh, like a, a bypass port so that there's nothing missing here when you see that that spring shouldn't come all the way to the top and it shouldn't come up against this plug unless it's in operation now here's the plug okay now what we got to do is uh, there's an o-ring that goes in here first so we're going to get that Okay, and I saved my O-rings. Don't have any new ones for right now. Okay, so in on top of that goes this O-ring right here. Okay. And the piston's down in there. Okay. And this little plug goes in there like that. And you just push this down till it bottoms out. like that snug not too tight okay that's in there now we got our drain plug for the bottom o-ring on that and you just make that nice and snug doesn't have to be overly tight and on the top you get your inlet pipe with your inlet screen and that goes down in here and there's an o-ring o-ring on that fitting right there Okay. 
And that's that. Okay, we're gonna try that in the tractor. Well, I'm back at it today, but look at this stupid weather. You know, it said it was gonna be sunny today. And this liquid sunshine, man, if I've ever seen it, that is not a nice day to work outside. So anyway, I'm in my little blue world here. I, I was here uh, for the last hour or so and it was just pouring rain. And I was under that tarp and fighting with that tarp and I got so sick of it. And I said, that's it. We're packing it up for the day. So I, I took about half an hour, picked up all my tools, tied everything up, tarped it over. And look at that. It stopped raining and the sun came out. So just when I'm going home, so. Ah. <sighs> And that, that squirrel, he's up there laughing at me. See right there? Are you laughing at me? You better not be laughing. Okay, here's the cover. Let's put it on there. Okay, I got that end cover put on the pump. And now I got two injection lines that I took off to get that cover off. I gotta put those back on. One here and the other one, so let's get those in. Okay, so the injection pump and those lines are back together. I've turned the fuel on. The oil level's okay. There's coolant right to the top of the rad. Air intake is just open. Exhaust is free. We're in neutral and the battery's hooked up. Okay, got the throttle in the wide open position. That's the slowest position. And that's wide open. And I'm gonna check my shutoff cam here. So the stop position is in the back. So that's off and that's run. All right, let's see what happens. Crack a line here. Let's see what we get. Not much showing there yet. Okay, there it is. Okay. It does want to run if it can get its fuel. Okay, let's see if there's any fuel came up to that rail. Let's see if there's any fuel up here. Well, that looks actually wet. It looks a little wet, look at that. That one's wet. I'll close that one back down. Oh, you never know. Put this one over here. Let's see what that one looks like. Uh, not so much back there. Let's give it a crank with the engine. Put that one there, like that. That's still running on ether. A little bit. Okay, I'll crank that one down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fitting out of the top of the end cover and I'm also going to take the return line fitting out 
And now there should be fuel trapped in there. Cranking it over should um, move fluid through the pump. And you know, if, it, if those levels stay static, then you know, it's not going through. So let's just try that. Okay, so I filled up both the inlet and the vent port. So that means that governor chamber is completely full right now. It wasn't uh, down that far. Maybe the depth of the cover. So maybe it doesn't have to fill beyond that. It looks like the bowl might've been completely full anyway, but I put sea foam, which is a concentrated uh, solvent. And uh, that's in the fuel system anyway, but uh, that's what I topped both of those holes up with. So let's crank it over and see if that disappears or if it goes down any amount. Okay, so it's obviously moving it through the pump, through into that chamber, and I can see it, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, puking out of the return line. So it would seem that the lift pump is doing its job. Okay, let's see if that's repeatable. Wow, there it is, after only three years of trying. <laughs> okay, so the other thing I did here today, 
just before it started. Now this could be a factor as well. I disconnected the, the throttle linkage that goes into the cab. Because I was thinking maybe this uh, little throttle is, is being held back somehow because, you know, it can come farther this way. So what I did was uh, I... Uh, so what I did was I disconnected the linkage and then I backed this screw out five full turns. So that allowed this little lever to come over this way a little farther. And that would be towards, you know, uh, more fuel, hopefully. And, and it seems like that might have been it. Uh, that Then again, the other thing I did was... I took off the, the inlet strainer here today, took off the hose, took off the in, inlet strainer, and I poured seafoam down in the pump, liquid seafoam, and I let it sit for about half an hour. And then I cranked it, and I let it go up in the pump, and then I let it sit a few more minutes. And then I filled it back up. So I probably put, you know, two or three ounces of seafoam right into the pump today. I don't know. And I had been bleeding these, and then I decided I'm just going to crank it without bleeding them. That You know, it seemed like there was a, just a little whisper of fuel coming up here and there. So I decided I, I'm not going to crank the, crack those anymore. I'm just going to leave those, and I'm just going to see if I can just wind it over. So I, I'd given it a couple of shots of ether, just little shots, and it kicked like it's been doing, you know, forever. And then uh, finally it started to go on its own. So what I'm going to do here right now is I'm going to turn on the fuel. And we're going to start it again, if it'll start. And we're going to try and see where it's leaking here. It's, it's spraying fuel out under the pump somewhere. So that's, you know, best to be seen when it's running. All right. Let's try it. One more time. And there it is. I got to uh, hook up the fan belt and the alternator because the pump's not uh, the water pump's not turning yet. But uh, it's okay to run it for a short bit, but uh, not for too long. Uh, that's all I'm going to run it today. But and there you go. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Leave some comments down below. Give us a thumbs up, please. Subscribe to my channel for more of this kind of stuff. And we'll see you again here very soon on Everyday Projects. Bye for now.